This is a Santorini earthquake update for the 20th of February 2025. At the moment, we are seeing a continued drop in the amount of energy released from the earthquakes, and we're also seeing the number of earthquakes drop. But the number of earthquakes being measured and recorded is still well above the norm. In today's earthquake update, we'll briefly look at the seismic activity changes. We'll look at uh, some seismograph data, the location of the recent epicenters, i.e. over the last 24 hours, and then we're going to jump into something a bit different. We'll look at the pattern of earthquake activity and see if there's any relation to the tides, i.e. are the highest and lowest tide periods coinciding with jumps in earthquake activity. As always, this video is based on an article on strikeengine.com, link in the video description, and in that article there's a link to a page that's got all the sources used in this article and video. So first of all, seismic data, cumulative earthquake energy released. Using the data from VolcanoDiscovery.com, we can see that the uh, total energy being released from earthquakes is continuing to fall rapidly. As of 11.20 GMT today, cumulative energy released is around 20 megawatts megawatt hours and this compares to around 90 megawatt hours yesterday however the number of earthquakes being recorded is still over 700 percent higher than normal so here we have the the blue line showing the cumulative energy and we can see we're continuing on this downward trend for the amount of energy released there isn't so many big earthquakes the earthquakes are being recorded now are sort of in the two and three range and these bars here indicate the number of earthquakes being recorded and we can see this is gradually falling uh, seismic location uh, in the previous couple of days we have seen that the epicenter of the swarms has been moving around quite a lot so we've seen them here we've seen them here we've seen them down here today however the epicenters are very similar to yesterday i.e southwest of Anidros Island. There could be a slight trend, the purple dots are the most recent ones followed by the red and then the orange. There could be a slight trend of these smaller earthquakes getting closer to Santorini and Eos Island but the quakes are relatively weak and I think they're probably not being felt on either of these islands. Something to note, on the 15th of February we also had a swarm of epicenters in the same area. So what we're seeing today with the movement, you know, towards Santorini and Eos is not something uh, unusual, I'd say. We have seen uh, earthquakes happening in this area. Seismographs, again, I'm going to use the ones in Anidros because they're the closest, I think, to the uh, earthquake epicenters. And here I've got a graph from yesterday's seismograph data versus today's seismograph data. And I think I'm, I think I'm correct in saying that these lines look uh, rougher today than they did yesterday. So there's a general underlying seismic activity happening, but the amount of big events, i.e., earthquakes that are getting measured, is less, and that tallies with uh, the data from VolcanoDiscovery.com. And just to put some, put these graphs into some perspective. Here is a graph from the 5th of February, so we can see that activity is well down, well down versus the 5th of February today is massively improved versus then. So then we come on to the uh, the bit off bit of off-piste analysis here. The tide effect, is there a pattern between the tides in the southern Aegean or in the Aegean Sea and earthquake activity that we've been seeing around Santorini? Are the tides playing a part in the Santorini earthquake swarm? Is the pull of the moon and the sun affecting seismic magmatic activity? And if so, can we make any type of prediction on what's going to happen over the next few days, over the next week? Below I've made a graphic. I use the term graphic very loosely. It overlays tide time and height versus the number of earth earthquakes and their cumulative energy release. And if my mind is not playing tricks on me, I think I see is a definite correlation between the two. So this is the graphic here. The blue lines are high and low tides, and the days uh, match almost exactly. So we've got first, 21st year. I'll go into that graph in a bit more detail. So what I've written in the article is the basics. Let's establish some baseline information. First of all, tides. I believe the common, uh, what can I say? 
uh, idea, hypothesis, theory, is that the moon and the sun have absolutely minimal power when it comes to affecting earthquake activity. But I would say on the flip side, the moon and the sun have the power to move billions, if not trillions of tons of water, i.e. the tides. And normal circumstances, normally the earthquake activity in the Aegean is very stable over time. I mean, the uh, cumulative uh, energy being released is super stable. In other words, in normal circumstances, when we have tides, high tides and low tides, and or periods where there's a big difference between the high and the low tides, normally there's minimal, if any, connection between earthquake, earthquake activity and the tides. I expect if there is any difference, maybe it's too small to measure. However, something has changed for this earthquake swarm to start. Something has changed because we are now in a period which is not normal. So I would say at the moment the circumstances are not normal and perhaps the current circumstances have created a situation where the movement of the sun and the moon are playing a much bigger part in earthquake activity than is normal. So coming back to the graphic, starting from the left is the 1st of February going through to the 21st. I've just done a, a little bit of analysis on the segments of uh, this graph. So 1st of first to the 6th of February, I said I think it's fair to say that the earthquake activity started around the time the tides were already at their extremes. There was a lag between earthquake activity increasing and the tides increasing. So what I'm saying is here, these tides were already at their extremes here but earthquake activity was maybe a little bit above normal but we only really see the swarm kick in as the uh, tides start to go start to come down so there's a lag there and i would say the lag is around three days at the start a lag three day lag between the tides being at their highest and then for uh, earthquake activity start to increase so that's the first of the 6th of february looking at the 6th to the 9th from the 6th to the 9th, the tides were at their lowest and most stable, i.e. the lowest difference between the high and low tides. And we can see that earthquake activity, the number of quakes dropping throughout this period. So this is where the tides were the smallest difference between high and low tides. And we can see that the earthquake activity was dropping during this period. Uh, looking at the 9th to the 13th of February, from the 9th to the 13th, the tides grew in size and we see a big uptick in earthquake as the tides started to increase. So this is a stable period and this is where the tides start to increase and immediately we're seeing a big uptick in the number of earthquakes that are happening as the tides are increasing. Uh, what I've said here is that there seems to be, the lag has gone the other way, whereas before the tides were leading the earthquakes, here, the earthquakes have started to decline, even though the earthquake act, uh, tide, act, tide size is still increasing. Uh, 15th to 21st of February, tides were dropping throughout this time, and earthquake activity was also generally dropping. So as it's coming down, we can see that the earthquake activity continued to come down during this time. And then coming on to the day, to the 25th of February, at the moment, the tides are at their lowest, i.e. the smallest difference between high and low tide. And at the same time, we are seeing almost the lowest number of quakes we have seen since the swarm has started. And the intensity of the quake is much lower now. So we're in this period here. The tides, the difference between high and low tides is obviously much smaller than here, relatively speaking. And we can see that the earthquake activity is also at its lowest point. Up until 25, 26, 27, 28, we can see that the tides are increasing again and they will be bigger. The difference between high and low tides will be bigger then. So if we start to see earthquake activity increasing like we did here when the tides started to increase, then maybe we can say that there's a, a correlation between the two. The tide earthquake connection, the conclusion I think it's fair to say that there is some connection between the tides and the earthquakes at the moment. That connection may continue or it may not. Around the 25th, we should start getting an idea if this correlation is going to continue. And if by the 28th, the activity is con continuing to drop back down to normal levels, we might be able to say that this connection has been broken. So all in all, Santorini earthquake update, 20th of February, 2025, the summary. Earthquakes are continuing to drop in frequency and intensity. 
there is a possible connection between tides and the number of earthquakes from the 25th of February onwards we might be able to see if that connection is still there so stay tuned guys that's the video if you've got time give it a thumbs up subscribe if you want more updates look after yourself and I'll see you again in the next video